Okay, kids, hope you had a great spring break. Uh, time to get back to factoring, actually. We're going back to chapter eight and I'm gonna talk about a couple methods of factoring that we had skipped uh, initially because they weren't on the park exam, but now there is no park exam, so let's go back and learn it because you'll need it for next year. So, um, factoring here, don't forget the methods we've already learned that what you always want to look for first, hopefully you remember this, is a greatest common factor, a GCF. Is there something you can take out of all the terms? So, in the first one, greatest common factor, the only thing I can take out of both is an A in this case. So, I take that A out in front, and we make a new set of parentheses, and what goes on the inside? 3x minus 5, right? You're just undoing the distributive property if you haven't done this in a while. If you distribute that back through, you'll get 3xa minus 5a. Easy, right? Look at this one and see if you can see the, the what it has in common with the previous one. It looks a little bit different because it's got these parentheses here, but instead of a, like in the last problem, it's got x plus 2, that whole set of parentheses. Well, we're going to treat it the same way, that there's a common factor of x plus 2 that each of these terms has, so I can take out that a, or in other words, that x plus 2. And after I take out that x plus 2, what will be left in here? I make a new set of parentheses, just like in the previous problem. And it's just like when you take it away from each of those, you'll have 3x minus 5, right? 3x minus 5. So the second quantity is just made up of these coefficients, 3x minus 5. And here's a second example for you to see that. 14xa minus a, common factor of a. Let's take that a out in front. And when we take a out, we're left with 14x minus 1 in this case, right? Because a times negative 1 is negative a. So there we go, factored form. Look at this. Instead of a, we've got a binomial of x minus 3. Same exact idea, though. I can take it out because it's in common. In the second set of parentheses, second quantity will be made up of 14x. And just like in the last one, that's really a minus 1 coefficient. So when you take x minus 3 away, you have minus 1. If you distribute this back through, x minus 3 times this, you'll get that. x minus 3 times negative 1, you get that. So same exact idea. And if you can handle that, then the next problem we're going to do is really easy. It's just about getting it into this format so that I can do this last step. And notice before we go on though, <clears throat> this is factored, this final answer. Factored means a series of products or things that are multiplied. Sometimes people just think, you know, having parentheses means you're factored. But this, for example, what we started with is not factored because there's plus or minus in between these two sets of parentheses. That's 14x times x minus 3 minus x minus 3. That's a difference there. They're not being multiplied. And the same thing here. But when you change it to this format, that is multiplied. That is factored. Okay, so this is where the new type of factoring comes in. And it's called factoring by grouping. And this technique of grouping is always going to be used when you have four or more terms. Four or more terms. So, taking a look at this first problem here, you've got one, two, three, four terms. The first thing you still always want to look for is a greatest common factor. Can you take anything out, anything that will come out of all four of these terms? And hopefully you see pretty quickly there's nothing you can take out other than one, which doesn't really do much good. So this is where you move on to the other methods. It's not two terms, so I'm not looking for dots. It's not three terms, so it's not unfoiling. It's four terms, so this is where I'm going to try this new method I'm going to show you, which is called grouping it. 
So here's the idea. You have this, these four terms. I'm going to think of this as grouping these two together and grouping these two together and factor them separately. So look at this group. And if you only look at that group, what can you factor out of those two terms? You can take a 4 out of 4 and 8, and you can take a y out. So I'm going to take out 4y. Now when you take out 4y, what are you left with? x plus 2. 4y times 2 will give you 8y. 4y times x will give you 4xy. Okay, so that little group is factored. Now, out of this group, what can we take out? We can take out a 3, and there's a plus in between there, so I'm, I'm taking out positive 3, really. And when you take out 3, you will have x plus 2. Notice how what you've done is you've just taken a GCF out of that group and a GCF out of that group. But if you distribute, you'll be right back to where you started, plus 3x plus 6x. And this is not factored, again, because there's a plus in between these two groups. This is not a series of products. But what we've just done, though, is we've changed it into one of these types of problems. So now we're one step away from being factored. Because now notice, when you look at the overall problem, they each have this x plus 2 quantity, which allows me to go to that next step where I can factor out that common x plus 2. And then what are you left with after you take x plus 2 away from each of these? 4y plus 3. 4y plus 3. And it should be said that, of course, the order doesn't matter when you write this final answer. You could write 4y plus 3, x plus 2. Some people like to take the common one, x plus 2, and put it at the back, and then make a new one out in front out of these coefficients, 4y plus 3. So it does not matter. It means the same thing either way. If you have the reverse of what I have, you're just, you're just fine. So here we go, new problem, just so you see it a couple times. There's no GCF I can take out of all four, so this is where I'm going to look to group them. Look at the first two and look at the second two. Out of this first group, out of 6xy and 3x, you can take out a 3x. When you take out 3x, you'll be left with 2y, and then 3x out of 3x, you'll be left with plus 1. Now out of this one, now one thing to notice is when you have a negative on the border here, Right, you know, right in between these groups, that really means you're going to want to take out a negative GCF out of this group. So what can I take out of uh, these two? I can take out 4 out of 8 and 4, or in this case I'm going to take out negative 4. When you take out negative 4, negative 4 times 2y will give you negative 8y, and negative 4 times positive 1 gives you negative 4. And this is how you know grouping works, is because we've got the same quantity there and there, 2y plus 1 and 2y plus 1, just like the last couple problems we've done. If these aren't exactly the same, then you've done something wrong, or maybe you need to rearrange and then try it a different way. But once you've got these the same, you're one step away from being done. So I can take out that common factor of 2y plus 1, And then 3x minus 4 makes up the other quantity, those coefficients, 3x and minus 4. Done. If you wanted to check, you could FOIL this whole thing out, and you should have exactly what you started with here at the very beginning. Very easy way to check. And one more of these just so you, you get the hang of it. If you want to hit pause on the video and try the problem yourself, and then hit unpause and see if you get the same thing, fine. Uh, you want to just keep watching? Fine. Hopefully you are still watching. What can I take out of this first group? I can take out a 5 out of 15 and 10, and I can take out a y from each. 5y, when I take 5y out of here, I will have 3x minus 2. Now from this group, 
there's really no GCF, no common factors you can take out of 3x and 2 other than 1. Or in this case, because it's got that negative sort of leading off the group, I'm going to take out negative 1. And I know we don't normally think of, uh, you know, factoring out 1 or negative 1 as making a big difference here, but the goal is to try to see if we can get the same quantity right there. And you see, if you take out a negative 1 out of here, negative 1 times 3x will give you negative 3x, and negative 1 times negative 2 will give you that positive 2, you've accomplished your goal of having the same quantity, which allows you to go to that next step. We each have 3x minus 2, take out 3x minus 2, and you'll be left with 5y minus 1. 5y minus 1. Done. You got the reverse order? Fine. You want to FOIL it out and double check? Make sure you got what you started with? Good plan. But that's it. So give it a shot. Check those odd answers in the back of the book. Email me with questions and have a good day.